Hello Year 3, it's Miss Shilcock again. I think today we're going to finish The Iron Man by Ted Hughes. So let's just remember what's happened so far in this book. First of all, the Iron Man came to the top of the cliff and he stepped off the edge and crash! He fell down the cliff and his arms fell off and his head fell off and his feet fell off and he was in pieces. And he put himself back together and then he went back into the sea and then a little while later People started noticing that their trucks were going missing and their metal was going missing. And they decided they wanted to hurt him. And a little boy called Hogarth said, stop, don't shoot him. And he spoke to him and found out that he was just hungry. He wasn't bad. And so he took him to a scrapyard so he could eat all the metal he wanted. Now, in the meantime, a space bat angel dragon from outer space was coming towards the Earth and landed smack on Australia. And when it landed on Australia, its voice rolled all around the world because it was so noisy. And it said, you have one week to prepare me a meal of living things, otherwise I will lick you all off the face of the earth. And nobody knew what to do. And the little boy Hogarth had an idea. And he thought, I will talk to my friend the Iron Man and see if he can help. And the Iron Man did have an idea. And he got himself taken to pieces and put in aeroplanes and flown to Australia. And he landed on the beach, put himself back together, and he said to the space bat angel dragon, I challenge you to a test of strength. And today we're going to find out what that test of strength is. So the last thing we read was this. The engineers had fastened all the girders together in the shape of a grid, a huge iron bed the size of a house. Under this, they had made a steel lined pit. Now they poured fuel oil into the pit, the space bat angel dragon watched. Now they lit the fuel oil and the flames roared up fiercely through the bars of the grid. What have they made? It's like a giant barbecue. And now the space bat angel dragon got his first shock. The Iron Man was stretching himself out on his back on the grid among the flames. His ankles crossed, his hands folded behind his head just as if he were in bed, while the flames raged under and around him, like this. The flames became fiercer. The grid became red hot. The Iron Man's hair and elbows and toes became red hot. His body became blue, then black, then began to glow dully. He was getting red hot. Still, he smiled up at the monster and still the flames grew fiercer. And now the Iron Man was entirely red hot. Pretty soon he was almost white hot and still he smiled out of white hot eyes with white hot lips and all the time the space bat angel dragon stared down in astonishment like this. But now the fuel oil was all burned away. Suddenly the flames died and flickered and went out. The white hot Iron Man sat up, stood up, got stiffly off his glowing bed and began to walk to and fro on the sand, cooling. He cooled slowly. He went from white to orange, from orange to red, from red to black. And as he walked, coolly swinging his arms. Now at last he spoke to the monster. If you can't bear to be made red hot like me, then you are weaker than I am, and I have won, and you are my slave. The monster began to laugh. Ha ha ha, all right, he roared. Build the fire and I'll lie on it. He laughed again. He knew the Iron Man couldn't build a fire the size of Australia. But then his laugh stopped. The Iron Man was pointing upwards at the sun. There is the fire for you, he shouted. You go and lie there. Go and lie on the sun till you are red hot. The monster gazed up at the sun. He felt strangely cold suddenly. But how could he refuse? All right. And he set off with giant slow wing beats. He lifted his immense body off the earth and flew slowly up to the sun while the whole earth watched. Slowly he covered the distance 
getting smaller and smaller as he went. At last he landed a ragged black shape sprawled across the sun. Everybody watched, and now they saw the monster begin to glow. Blue at first, then red, then orange. Finally, his shape was invisible, the same blazing white as the sun itself. The monster was white hot on the sun. Then they saw him returning, a blazing shape tearing itself off the sun. The shape became red as it flew. It was writhing, which means kind of wriggling and growing larger. Slowly, once more, it became the black, back, bat winged shape of the dragon, flying back to earth, down and down and bigger and bigger, cooling as he came until, bump, he landed, this time much more heavily than before, on Australia. He landed so heavily that all over the world, bells tumbled out of church towers and birds' eggs were jarred out of their nests. The monster stared down at the Iron Man, but it was hardly the same monster. His horns drooped, his face was wizened and black, his claws were scorched, and his crest flopped over limply, and the great ragged holes were burned in his wings. It had been terrible for him on the fires of the sun, but he had done it, and here he was. The fires of the sun are far far hotter than any fire here on earth can be. There, he roared, I've done it. The Iron Man nodded, but his answer was to signal to the engineers. Once more, they poured oil into the trough under the grid. Once more, they lit it. And once more, the flames roared up and the black smoke billowed up into the clear blue. And once more, the Iron Man stretched himself out on the grid of the raging furnace. The space bat angel dragon watched in horror. He knew what this meant for him. He would have to go once more into the sun's flames. And now the Iron Man's hair and toes and elbows were red hot and he lay back in the flames, smiling up at the dragon and his whole body was becoming red hot and then orange and then finally white like the blazing wire inside an electric bulb. Now at this point, the Iron Man was terribly afraid. But what would happen if the flames went on getting fiercer and fiercer? He would melt. He would melt and drip into the flames like so much treacle, and that would be the end of him. So even though he grinned up at the dragon as though he were enjoying the flames, he was not enjoying them at all and he was very frightened. Even the engineers who were hiding behind thick asbestos screens over a mile away along the beach felt the hair singeing on their heads and they too thought it was the end of the Iron Man. Perhaps they poured in just a little too much oil. But at that very moment and that very second that the edge of the Iron Man's ear started to melt, the fuel was used up and the flames died out. The engineers came running down the beach. They saw the red hot Iron Man getting off his fearful bed and moving to and fro on the sand, cooling off. At last, the Iron Man looked up at the dragon. He could hardly speak after his ordeal in the flames. Instead, he simply pointed towards the sun and jabbed his finger towards the sun as he gazed up at the monster. That's twice, he managed to say. Now it's your turn. <laughs>